I know you've got clothes you've been avoiding because of the way you make you feel. Maybe it's a pair of jeans that always seem to pinch you at the waist or that dress that seems to hug your belly after you eat and you feel like you look pregnant. Now, if you're like most of us, you've felt this way way too many times. And I have good news that can quickly turn this around. So it's time to put away the stretch pants and pull out those skinny jeans from the back of your closet because these five things are going to get rid of your belly bloat and gut issues for good. I'm going to share with you five steps to solving your gut problem. Number one, you got to remove the high five foods. What is that? These are high food intolerance foods. If you're stepping on the scale every day, which I highly recommend you do, you go out to eat, you come back and boom, the next day you're like, what the heck? I'm, my weight's up three to four pounds. You know that you didn't gain three to four pounds overnight. That overweight night gain, boom, it's not fat gain, it's inflammation. And when you look at that, it's probably due to a food intolerance. So what the heck is food intolerance? Again, I wrote the book on this, it's called The Virgin Diet. And early on, I discovered that a lot of the foods that we're eating, thinking we're eating healthy, could actually be hurting us because of something called leaky gut. Leaky gut is when your small intestine becomes more permeable than it should be, it's semi-permeable, because of stress, because of eating gluten or fructose, because of certain pain medications. And when that happens, coupled with poor digestion, lower stomach acid, not really breaking apart your foods the way you should, food passes out into circulation where it has no business being, and your body goes, holy smokes, what is that? And launches an immune attack. Creates, takes little antibodies, grabs a hold of that food that shouldn't be there, and makes immune complexes. And if these things build up, they wreak havoc. They cause gas, they cause bloating, they cause joint pain, fatigue, skin problems, all sorts of stuff. But really key is that gas and bloating. But a lot of times we have this low grade bloating and inflammation scale going up and it's because of food intolerance. And removing these high five foods gives your body a chance, your, your gut a chance to just go, to exhale, to rest and to heal. If you're going, hi, I wonder if I have that, check out The Virgin Diet. And I also have my 21 day breakthrough program where I guide you through exactly how to do this. It's super simple. I call it swap into drop and you can make a big difference quickly. And speaking about swapping to drop, one of the things that I have you do there is add gut healing foods because it's not just about pulling out the foods that could be hurting you. It's about swapping in the foods that can help you. And one of the foods that I love that can super help you is freshly ground flaxseed meal. It's first of all, a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, the one alpha linolenic acid, and it's got great fiber and nutrients. In fact, a 2019 study in the journal Nutrients showed that flax can support the gut by improving healthy bacteria and minimizing unhealthy bacteria. But one of the things I really love about it is that it's mucilaginous and it can help heal the gut lining. Now, another thing I love for healing the gut is wild caught seafood. It's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And there was a study published in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences that found that omega-3 fatty acids can reduce inflammation, which is really important if you've been eating these high fi foods and it's holding on to weight. Now you've heard an apple a day. Turns out that it's really true because apples provide pectin and pectin is a type of fiber that can help relieve constipation. It's also a great prebiotic. There was a 2016 animal study published in Nutrients that found that apple-derived pectin can improve the balance of good bacteria, can keep dead bacteria from crossing the gastrointestinal barrier to end up in the bloodstream and cause inflammation. That's called endotoxemia. And it can suppress the weight gain and fat accumulation. Pretty amazing. All right, next one is extra virgin olive oil. There was a 2022 study that was published in Nutrients that found that adding extra virgin olive oil can improve gut permeability and low grade endotoxemia. So again, I look at uh, extra virgin olive oil, you wanna make sure you're getting really high quality. I use Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club and I do one to two tablespoons a day. Now, avocado is another one you're gonna to wanna to incorporate in. It's high in fiber and monounsaturated fatty acids. There was a study in 2021 in the Journal of Nutrition that found that eating avocados can help with improved production of short chain fatty acids, which then produce butyrate, a fatty acid that supports colon health and the balance of gut bacteria. So butyrate is a really, really important fatty acid for fat burning. It's a short chain fatty acid. It's produced in the large intestine during the microbial fermentation of dietary fiber. It has an appetite suppressing activity. It can burn fat more efficiently 
and it can promote a healthy metabolism. And because it's fat soluble, it can be stored and used for energy when food is scarce. Also, it can increase thermogenesis. This is the process by how your body produces heat, which is another way that it can help you burn fat. Okay, another one here that's super important is bone broth. There was a 2021 study that was published in the journal Medicina that found that bone broth provides anti-inflammatory properties, which could decrease the symptoms of gut issues. Now I get bone broth in every day. I kind of cheat, I'll be honest, but my paleo inspired protein powder is basically concentrated bone broth. And then what you're getting from bone broth, one of the key things is collagen. So I use extra collagen, my collagen peptides in there as well. It's also a great way for me to make sure I'm getting my protein. Prebiotic foods are super important here. Onions, artichokes, leeks, asparagus, oats, and apples, bananas, potatoes. And when we're talking here bananas, I'm talking barely ripe, slightly green bananas. I'm talking cold boiled potatoes and beans. These are super important because prebiotics basically are the food for your probiotics. So if you're eating more fermented foods like coconut yogurt, you're taking probiotics like my Flora Harmony from Reignite Wellness, the prebiotics are basically the fertilizer to help really get the good bacteria to take hold. So it's super important. You also want to make sure when we're talking about good bacteria that you're lowering your sugar impact because a high sugar diet can negatively impact your gut microbiome. There was a 2020 study in nutrients that showed that sugar, and this is like the no big surprise, but sugar can increase harmful bacteria. It can decrease healthy bacteria. It can damage the gut barrier. And by the way, we know that fructose especially leads to leaky gut. It increases inflammation. It decreases mucosal immunity. It can contribute to metabolic dysregulation, which then can lead to all sorts of metabolic diseases like obesity and diabetes and cancer. Okay, so if we're looking at avoiding, especially first, like avoid added sugars, what can you use? Well, there's so many great alternatives now. My favorites, monk fruit, stevia, erythritol, or allulose. What I've been using in a lot of my recipes lately is something called Lakanto, which is monk fruit and, and allulose combo. That one's monk fruit and erythritol. And I've been using a lot more allulose in a lot of my products as well. Now, the other thing you wanna make sure that you have is fiber. You gotta have fiber in your meals because fiber is gonna slow the blood sugar response to the meal. So that's super important. Other important thing here is you want to make sure you're taking digestive enzymes. If you're experiencing gas or bloating after eating, some constipation or feeling of fullness, even if you just ate a little bit, digestive enzymes can really help here because poor digestion leads to bloating. Digestive enzymes can help your body break down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins from food. That's what it does. And when you do that, you're also going to help with nutrient absorption. And remember, you are what you absorb. So you're eating food to get the nutrients. You got to be able to absorb the nutrients. If you're low in enzymes and you're putting a Band-Aid on, you didn't fix anything. You're not helping nutrient absorption. So I really highly recommend a trial of digestive enzyme. You want to improve your stress tolerance. I mean, stress has a massive impact on your gut. So I think that we need to take our nervous system to the gym, just like we take our muscles to the gym. And how do you work out your nervous system? Well, you can regulate your nervous system with breath work, with meditation, with tapping, with exercise, especially high intensity interval training helps your body handle your sympathetic nervous system handle stress better. So highly recommend like think about taking your nervous system to the gym and what will work for you, just like you would take your body to the gym. Here's the deal can't get rid of stress, but we can help how we respond to it. So GABA can be super helpful, B3, niacin, because it supports serotonin production, which goes down when we're under stress, B6, which also supports serotonin and GABA production. Remember, GABA is a calming neurotransmitter, pantothenic acid, which really is the anti-stress vitamin, can really supports the adrenal glands, which are what are pumping out cortisol in response to stress, and then glycine, which is this calming, relaxing amino acid. All right, so there's five steps that are huge for band Banishing belly bloat and gas for good. If you suspect you're dealing with leaky gut syndrome or if you're dealing with weight that just won't budge, you're gonna wanna check out this next video on how leaky gut might be the reason you're struggling to keep your weight off.